amazing crochet family i am your one and your only lady of crochet lady simone and we are back with another video yes 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 so y'all this is a nice fun relaxing friend to friend our crochet family we are going to have a conversation today we are going to talk with each other y'all grab your crochet hook or whatever it is that you craft with you may not even craft you may say you know what i just want to sit down and watch something good on youtube today this is the video for that y'all because we are going to chat it up and we are going to talk not about facts today y'all we are going to talk about opinions we are going to talk about the 10 fun and engaging popular opinions as related to crochet y'all i'm super excited about this topic and i am not going to be crocheting in this video because as y'all if you have followed me and watched any of my other videos where i try to crochet and talk it just does not work y'all <laughs> it does not work so i don't know what it is when i am talking to y'all i cannot crochet at the same time but it's okay because y'all can crochet while I'm talking. And if it's something that resonates, y'all go ahead and let's type it out in the comments below. And let's have a conversation about it. But we are going to break this thing down by, we're going to start at number 10. So we're going to talk about the 10 unpopular opinions when it comes to crochet. Then we're going to, I have a cheat sheet, y'all. I have my, my cheat sheet here. And we are going to talk about it. And then we're going to just get to number one. And I want y'all to tell me in the comments below what y'all feel about these top 10 unpopular opinions and do y'all share like do y'all be like you know what yeah i agree with that one so coming in at number 10 y'all we have frogging is therapy so it says some crocheters find ripping out stitches oddly satisfying while others see it as heartbreaking are you team therapy or team devastation now which one are you <laughs> Team therapy or team devastation? For me, at first, I would say starting out, I was definitely team devastation, y'all. I wish I had my project right beside me because it's so funny that I have, I started like a little top. It was supposed to be like a sweater and I used wrong color combinations. I'm not real good at like putting and mixing a whole bunch of colors together and I know some people who would mix colors, and you'd be like, dang, that looks amazing. Me, on the other hand, when I mix some colors, I don't know. I don't even know how it can go that bad, but it does. So I was starting on like a little sweater, and I have to frog it. So now, I guess the older that I am, and now that I'm a little more relaxed in the craft, Frogging to me is okay. I'm a little more team therapy now. I was team devastation though when it came to frogging because I remember early on when I would do a project and I had to frog it, I felt so bad and it almost made me not want to complete the project. But y'all let me know in the comments which one are y'all. Do you like to frog? Are you like heartbroken when you um, have to frog a project? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. We are going to move on to number nine. Y'all, number nine says, crochet isn't just a winter hobby. Now, many people associate crochet with like blankets, winter time. You know, they say, okay, only scarves and hat projects. But now you see a lot of people crocheting for the summertime. They will crochet bikinis, skirts. Some hats even they crochet for the summertime. So I want y'all to tell me, do you believe that crochet is just a winter hobby? Or are you one of those people that crochet summer and winter and think that, hey, you can enjoy crochet year around? Me, I feel that crochet can be enjoyed year round because there's always something for someone to do. And we have to understand, some people in the summertime, don't feel the same as others like i'm a hot nature i'm no i'm naturally a cold person like it seems like i'm always cold so when the air is on in the um summertime i'm like man it's freezing in here everybody else feels amazing so that's the time where i have now i have like a crochet um blanket that i throw over my couch so when the air has to be on in the house because i'm the only one that's always cold I use that to cover up. So let me know 
For number nine, crochet isn't just a winter hobby. Do you think that it's only should be for winter or designated? Or is it designated for winter just for you? Or do you find yourself saying, no, I use crochet year round? So that is our number nine, unpopular opinion. We are moving on, y'all, to number eight. Number eight, <laughs> chunky yarn. <laughs> Chunky yarn is for quitters, but we still love it. So this is how they break this one down. Is chunky is using chunky yarn to finish projects faster a smart hack or does it feel like cheating? And is it okay to admit we love how quickly it works up? Y'all, I don't think it's cheating at all. Listen here. Chunky yarn, I feel like they especially during the winter time. Now that's a yarn you can definitely just chuck out. Even I know some people do a lot of baby blankets and chunky yarn too. But, oh, amigurumi. I use um, chunky yarn for amigurumi as well. So for me personally, I don't think it's cheating because I would say that it's just dependent on what project that I would use it. It's not that I use it to cheat. It's just some things look better in chunky yarn and feels better, especially when it comes to amigurumi. But y'all let me know about that. Number eight, unpopular opinion. Do y'all feel like chunky yarn is cheating because you move so much quicker when we use it? That to me is a funny one. If you are enjoying the conversation, y'all, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Please, please, please write a comment below and let's talk about some of these unpopular opinions. We are going to move right along because we have 10 to get through and I don't want to hold y'all too long in this video. So anyways, number seven says crochet hooks to have their own passport. Now listen to this. <laughs> Some crocheters think taking hooks everywhere, even on vacations and to restaurants, is necessary, while others think it's overkill. What's your take? Okay, y'all, I feel like if you can multitask and you wanna take your hook everywhere, take your hook everywhere. Like, listen, if you can do it, do it. I don't see anything wrong with it. Me, on the other hand, sometimes, like, I'll, I know I've taken my projects with me some places sometimes, and I'm so caught up in what I'm actually going to do that I can't multitask and crochet. Because one time, y'all, I had this brilliant idea. <laughs> I said, I'm going to take my hook with me when I walk around the track. So I have my beautiful bag by Distinctively Handcrafted. I have like my um, sling bag. I put my yarn in there. It was so easy for me to walk around and crochet. But that multitasking, crocheting, and walking, y'all, it was like I could not focus to do it long enough. So I only got a little bit of it done. But if you can, I feel like, hey, more power to you. You don't need a passport, y'all, for that hook. Go on, take your hook everywhere and listen. You got one up on me because you will, you can multitask really good. <laughs> You're a good multitasker. So let's talk a little bit about number six. Amigurumi should be illegal after midnight. So this says tiny detail stitches plus sleepy hands equals disaster. Is there a crochet curfew for complicated projects? Y'all, I don't know about complicated projects. There, for me, it's a cr crochet um, curfew for black yarn and just in general if i'm sleepy i'm a person that gonna fall asleep like this so if you put a crochet project in front of me and i'm tired i'm dozing off on that project i'm like i'm going i don't care it could be the simplest stitch it could be a granny stitch y'all i'm gonna mess that granny stitch up but that's just me so let me know if y'all are one of those people who can crochet all times of night i've even seen some people say they wake up like super early or they stay up late at night to crochet but me hey i have a curfew on my crochet y'all that's the unpopular plan i have to agree i have a curfew on it because listen i'm gonna mess up the whole entire project if i'm sleepy and trying to crochet <laughs> but anyways number five says you can never have too much yarn said no partner ever <laughs> the eternal debate it's a massive yarn stash, an inspiration, or a sign of a hoarder. So, let's see. And it says bonus points if you showcase your stash or lack of. Now, y'all, this one right here for me is 
Like, y'all probably already know my answer. I love, love, love a good sass. I love yarn. Look behind me, y'all. Listen. I remember early on, this was like a while ago. I would watch some YouTubers. This was like years ago, before I even thought about um, actually creating a YouTube channel for crochet. And I thought it was the most amazing thing. I was like, oh my goodness, it has so much cute yarns. And I remember a lot of people would get a lot of slack about the yarns that they have. And you would have a lot of people that said negative things about them for having a yarn stash. And I never could understand that because I'm like, why does it matter, A, for one? Like, their stash has nothing to do with you, clearly. <laughs> and like, if that's what makes someone happy, I am 110% for If you like it, I love it, hello, if it makes you happy, do it. Y'all, my yarn stash is my yarn stash. It does not always tell people when someone has an opinion that nobody asks about them, like, okay, did that affect your day in any way? Like, did that add value to your life? Like, some people will say negative stuff about people, and you'll be like, why are why does it bother you so much like if that's what makes that person happy and it's not hurting anyone y'all i'm all for the yarn stash like yarn stash me up i love a good yarn stash and then the crazy thing is about yarn stashes for me is that i will have the yarn stash but when it's time for me to do a certain project i won't have the yarn that i need i think that's the most wild crazy thing but it happens like <laughs> that for me but y'all, I am Team Yarn Stash. Let me know what y'all think. And listen, we are talking about opinions. This is not facts. So guess what? If you like it or if you don't, listen, you are entitled to your opinion. That is okay. This is what this video is all about, y'all. We are just having fun conversation. But I am definitely Team Yarn Stash. And um, I am so, um, I'm so excited and pleased that my whole entire family are team yarn sash so you know that makes it a little easier like when you have everyone cheering you on and wanting to add to your yarn sash like listen but I, i'm gonna say this and we're gonna move on because y'all see how excited i get about that yarn sash i could stay on this one uh, all day <laughs> but i would say i think that i gravitate more towards the yarn sash because i've always ever since a little girl always loved collecting I've always, like, um, collected snow globes or, like, journals because I love, love, love to write. So, it's like, I've always, I've always been a collector. So, collecting yarn, was just, it just fell into place for me. But, let's move on, y'all. Number four. Color changing yarn is cheating. <coughs> excuse me. Some crochet, oh, excuse me. Some crocheters feel using self-striping or variegated yarn takes away from the art of color work. Is it lazy or genius? Y'all, if you have the opinion to say that it's lazy, you are entitled to that opinion, but let's guess what? I'm going to use that variegated yarn. I'm going to use that mix-up color, and I'm not even going to go through it and try to color swap that thing either. I'm going to use it however that thing unwinds. I'm going to use it. Y'all got to let me know. Are you team variegated or you're like, no, we have to really have these colors this certain way. And I know there are some people who feel like I have to have it this certain way. And that is A-OK. -okay. I think that's beautiful. I think that is beautiful work, y'all. But my mind is mixed in color. Mine's is mixed up, y'all. I don't have anything like this color here, this color here, this color nothing up here goes like that i'm mixed up all the way around and i love it i think i think variegating yarn is beautiful like i think mixing yarn is beautiful so i am definitely team color changing yarn <laughs> i am definitely team color changing yarn so let me know are y'all team color changing yarn or do you think like no you should not use variegated you should make sure those colors align and whoop the woo Sorry, I am not the whoop the woo. I want my variegated. <laughs> so, y'all, we have made it to the top three. I'm going to fold my paper so that I can look, y'all. Drum roll, please. <laughs> that was not a good drum roll. <laughs> I hope y'all are having a good time with this conversation. I hope y'all are getting some stuff crocheted, y'all. But, or whatever craft you're doing, 
and listening to this video. I hope y'all are able to get it done. And we are just, like I said, having a very good conversation. I enjoy making these videos and talking to my crochet family. So top three, y'all. Number three, plush yarn. Love it or hate it? Do you love it or do you hate it? So plush yarn is soft and fun, but also notoriously hard to work with. Is it worth the struggle or does it belong in the in the boneless yarn category? <laughs> yeah, I get so excited here at boneless yarn because I remember doing the short about boneless yarn. <laughs> so now I feel that um plush yarn, I love working with plush yarn. Now there are certain plush yarns, and I'm gonna say this, y'all. I'm not gonna go on a rant. But if I do, I apologize in advance, okay? I'm going to try not to go down this rabbit hole. But I really, really enjoyed when Joann's had the posh yarn. Joann's had the posh yarn. It's a plus yarn. It was beautiful, y'all. No shedding. It, wor it, it worked up. Your projects are going to look magnificent. I really had loved that yarn. It only came in a certain um, amount of colors, but I was wishing and hoping. I'm like, maybe they'll come up with more because I see people loved it. And then Joanne's discontinued the yarn. Then they brought it back. And then when they brought it back, I was the person that's like, listen, man, y'all playing with us because I was so gun ho on those yarns. I thought I found my most favorite yarn. I'm like, listen, I don't have to go search in no other place. I'm going to just order as I go when I need it. Then to have it gone, I was in my feelings. I was in my feelings, y'all, when Posh Yarn, it's like, why? I think it's posh or is it plush? I think it's either plush or posh. Y'all let me know in the comments. It Was it the plush or posh for Joann's? Because one of them is the chunkier one and they still have it. But I was in my feelings because I really had enjoyed that yarn. So I didn't get it back when it read up. Then it went away again. And I was just like, you know what? And the crazy thing is, ever since then, I was not interested in making amigurumi because I really had loved that yarn. Then I try to order with ice yarns, and that did not turn out good. That yarn, I thought it was similar to the ones from Joanne. No, 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 no. <laughs> Y'all, that was not it. So I think that really had put a damper in my crochet, and I found myself not really making a lot of amigurumi because that was like a favorite yarn for me. And it's like when I find something that I love, I really love that thing. But like I say, I'm not going to go down to the rabbit hole, y'all. So y'all let me know. Do y'all, are y'all team plush yarn? Do you love it or do you hate it? And if you love it, maybe y'all can convince me and tell me what are some of your favorite plush yarns that do not shed because that's my biggest thing. I do not like those yarns that shed. When I'm working with it, it's all on my shirt. Ugh. That's just like, so let me know what's your favorite plush yarn, if you love it or if you hate it. Number two, y'all. Number two, whew, granny squares are either classic or totally played out. Is the granny square a time and staple or has it overstayed its welcome, y'all? You could even ask viewers like y'all or people like, I want to know. If you ever seen a Granny Square project that has gone wrong, y'all, listen. I know <laughs> there are some Granny Square projects that have gone wrong, okay? I know that. I know. I know. But listen, no one can tell me that Granny Squares is not it. I love, 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 love Granny Squares, y'all. Granny squares would never be played out for me. I absolutely love granny squares. I feel like granny squares are like the end-all, be-all when it comes to crochet. It's a classic, but then you can also modernize it. Like, I've seen some people do some amazing things with granny squares. You'd be like, dang! Like, I love granny squares. I love a granny square blanket. I love a good granny. I love to just crochet a granny square and just let it sit there. You can make a granny square coaster. I love a good granny square. And I don't think it's played out. I think the classic look, the retro type look, makes it, like, even better for me. But I am, I guess I would say I love nostalgia. I I just love old school stuff, y'all. 
and I love seeing stuff that like is representation from the old and then people are kind of like redoing it and putting a stamp on it and it's just like something about that to me so I am definitely team granny square y'all I love a good granny square I don't think I ever fall out of love with a good granny square I have like two granny square continuous blankets that I have in my whips that was there all year and I need to pick it right back up but listen you can never go wrong with a granny square and I feel like Granny Square is more like a mindless project. That's why I really, really love it. But y'all let me know. Are you team Granny Square? Do you think it's played out? Or do you like, no, it's an endless classic. It will forever be a classic in a crochet world. Let me know what you think, y'all. And we are going to talk about the number one, y'all. Number one in my note says, whoo-hoo. Y'all, I was like, listen, this has to be number one. Because when I say y'all going to know which side I'm on. Crochet ruffles make everything better or worse. So, some crocheters love putting ruffles on everything from socks to gloves, while others think there's a stick, while others think they are excessive and over the top. So, I want you to tell me, are ruffles fabulous or too much? Y'all, I'm sorry. Y'all already know, I'm team fabulous ruffles over here. Ruffle me out. I don't care, just put the ruffle on it, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I love a good ruffle. But ruffles to me is playful. Ruffles to me is fun. Ruffles to me like is inviting and joyous. Like ruffles add a nice, like fun touch to the project. Now, I don't think everything should have a ruffle. Don't get me wrong. I don't think every project should have a ruffle. Every hat should have a ruffle. I don't believe all of that. But if I had to pick with some team ruffle, y'all, I am absolutely team ruffle. I love a good ruffle, and I feel like ruffles make your project look so beautiful, especially like some little kids' projects, even some uh, big kids' projects, like big adult kids, y'all, because I'm telling you, I will walk around with them ruffles. I am team ruffles. But listen, this video is all about opinions and not facts, y'all. So I want y'all to tell me, what do y'all think? Do y'all think that ruffles should be on projects or they should not listen this is just your opinion in the comments below y'all tell me what y'all think and like we're gonna be respectful because we friends we talking so you can have your opinion if you love it you love it if you don't you don't we are adults and we can have a great conversation about whether we like something or if we don't like it and guess what it's a-okay because Nobody, no one person in the world, or no two people, I don't think, gonna like the same exact thing all across the board. That's just that would be boring. <laughs> that would be boring. Like if everybody liked the same thing. So I want y'all to tell me what y'all thought about the ten opinions that we talked about in the um video today. And before we get up out of here, y'all, we are going to pull from our inspiration jar. Yes, yes, yes. And I hope y'all really enjoyed the video. Like I said, while I'm pulling, comment below. Let's have a conversation about all of this. And let's talk about our inspiration. So it says, the future depends on what you do today. Oh, that's so beautiful. Y'all know I like a good quote. I love a good quote. Y'all, I love a good quote. I'm going to say that one again. The future depends on what you do today. So listen, what you do today, you are actually planting seeds for the future. I'm going to give y'all this right here, and I'm going to get on up out of here because this is how I live life, and this is how I look at life, right? I always say, and you can ask my kids, my family, everybody. I said for me, I live life like I'm planting different seeds. I live life in a garden. This is my garden of life. And... Every YouTube video is a seed that's planted. Now, however that seed sprouts, because I feel like there's so much love within each of my YouTube videos, that someone is going to get something good out of each and every one of them, whenever the time comes. Every tree is not going to grow this fast. So I may have a video up that's like a year or two, and then people start seeing it, and it's like, oh my goodness, I really enjoy that video. That's something that I planned in my garden life, y'all. So whatever I'm doing today, like this video, like me being kind to people, me being nice and loving, all of that is planting seeds in my garden of life. And as the time go by, you eventually see the, the trees and all of that stuff 
grow and then you're going to see something pop up on there. It could be your little apple, your orange, whatever tree you're growing. And in our tree of life, we see so many different things that will pop up on our tree that is, like they say, you can, you're going to bear fruit. And then you're going to be able to pick that fruit. You're going to enjoy that fruit because that was something that you was able to grow in your garden of life, y'all. So understand that no matter how big, no matter how small, y'all plant great, amazing seeds because you never know. You never know what kind of fruit will come from out of what you actually planted. You never know. So sometimes you may think like, hey, this is not going to grow in this season. This one won't. You never know how it turns out. With that being said, I hope y'all really enjoyed this video, y'all, because I enjoy sitting down and talking to y'all. And I want you to always remember that I am your one and your only Lady of Crochet, Lady Simone, and I will see you next time.